Well, good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott. I'm the head trader for Wealth Press. Today is August 6th, and it's a Thursday. We've got jobless claims coming out in just a little while. The key right now, I'm not going to go into the exact numbers. The range looks fairly solid, 1.38 million to 1.5 million. The consensus is right around the middle ground there, right in between these two, somewhere right in between these two at 1.442. The key right now, folks, is for us to stay within or with right around the four-week moving average. We were below or right at the four-week moving average for about, I think, two months, and it started moving up. And when you look at, so the key is to get closer to this number, to 1.3 million than 1.5 million. But the truth is, and I'm going to tell you the bigger problem, the biggest problem is tomorrow's report which is the unemployment report. And the problem with this report is the range. Uh, the range is just something else. We're looking at, um, look at this, 4.8 million, 2 million, and the range is 350,000, <laughs> excuse me, to two and a half million. So we're all over the place. I mean, we're literally all over the place. It's like a moving target. So. We don't know what the range will be. Whenever the consensus is like 350,000 to two and a half million, that's just telling us Wall Street has absolutely no clue where US employment is going to end up. And that's a big, big issue. That's a big, big, big issue. Because ultimately, employment, people who don't work, can't produce, can't, people can't produce, can contribute to the economy and so forth and so forth and so forth. I don't have to explain to you basic economics 101, but you understand the, when the range is this wide, it means we're kind of just flying blind. And if we're flying blind, well, what else does that tell you? We're flying blind with number of people who are not working. We're flying blind when with when the vaccine is coming out. And we're flying blind with the current stock market. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainties and the market cannot stand uncertainties. It thrives in uncertainties, but it can't stand uncertainties, which means increased volatility. So with that in mind, that's what we can expect today and tomorrow. We got two big reports, but I want to talk about global markets. And then I want to give you a new stock on the block that I'm looking at. It's the first time I'm going to premiere it and I'm going to give you the entry level and I'm going to give you the options. And I'll give you all the other good stuff that comes with it. But let's talk about global economy first. Stocks were mixed in Europe and Asia overnight. Investors are law are watching lawmakers ahead of when the fresh stimulus for U.S. economy is struggling. Struggling. We don't know when it's coming and if it's going to come. Report released Wednesday. This is a private report from ADP, which is a good preview of what we can expect later today and tomorrow. Suggests U.S. hiring was far weaker last month than economists expected. You see that? Far weaker. You see the range? 350,000 to 2.5 million. Are you understanding why? Private employers just added 167,000 jobs, according to ADP, well below 1.2 million that economists forecast. That's just terrible. That means we have no gauge. We don't have a heartbeat of where the economy is going. If we don't have a heartbeat of where this economy is going, it's very, very hard to extrapolate data. Rise caseloads of COVID-19 remain a concern. However, Spain warning of a relapse while numbers continue to mount in USA. Hong Kong authorities reported 85 newly confirmed cases, almost all of them untraceable or locally transmitted. In Japan, the government where Toyota Motor Company has its headquarters declared a state of emergency through August 24th. That's three more weeks or two, two more weeks saying newly confirmed cases have been rising by more than 100 daily. Before that, cases have been zero. So, folks, when Toyota starts closing plants in Japan and U.S. can't figure out if we're going to have 350,000 or 250,000 jobless claims, that's, that's, not a, that's not a recovery. I'm going to be honest with you. In Washington, back in Washington, Congress and White House officials are negotiating more aid for the economy that's shown some improvement, but is wobbling, hobbling. I would say wobbling, hobbling. It's not doing that great. Investors say such a package is crucial and need to arrive quickly with millions of Americans still out of work and $600 in weekly unemployment benefit from the U.S. have recently expired. In other news, 
Energy prices are right at that break-even level for U.S. companies. I'm watching this very, very carefully. Also, before I give you the stock, I want to look at the bond market because I have a feeling with all of this info, the bond market, yeah, it's up overnight about one point. Look for more upside in the bond market. And if we can break above this level, the 172 in the TNT, let me show you the futures. Let's go to the futures. Let's go to financials and I'll show you the bond market. The T-bond market. All right, we can look at the September T-bond. Volume is still in September, so let's just take a quick look at it. And if you trade, if you like to trade the bond market, but you used to, but you like to trade it with stocks and not futures, TLT is the right asset. So at this level, we've already broken above the high. And here's the thing: notice how low volatility is. Whenever volatility levels are this low price tends to continue moving. It's when volatility goes like this. When you see volatility going crazy, like expanding into bars like this, that's when things are done. But whenever you see volatility low, it means things are not being, that means the flow of money is not being disrupted. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of lopsided in the buying, coming and selling. It's just a very slow accumulation period. That's what you're seeing here. And if that's the case, and look, we're already above a swing high, the March high. So this is already a six month high and it looks like we can go higher. Now, if you look at a one year high, it looks like we can definitely go higher. Expect for the market to cool off, the stock market to cool off and for the bond market to be stay defensive. And again, if you're looking at the bond market via treasure, via the stock market, you could look at the TLT ETF. That's what I look at. And again, it's right near that level. If it breaks above the 172 level, 172.10 level, looks like it's going to go higher. Bonds are defensive and defensive stocks right now, defensive assets, not stocks right now, is where you wanna be, especially with the economic data coming out and with the ADP report, which is a private report that came out yesterday. And it's telling us that economic data is just not pretty. Now, let's talk about my hot stock. Now this stock, this stock is Hologic, ticker symbol H-O-L-X. They make medical supplier for diagnostic products, metal Im me medical imaging, surgical products, diagnostic, breast care, surgical, skeleton health. Look at the, the gains. Look at the revenue. Revenue is growing steady. Earnings are growing steady. Three-year gain, 91%. That means it's doing about 31% per year, and it's just heating up right now. If you look at earnings estimates, Look at this, this is what I like to see. Earnings surprises all last four quarters. And the last quarter, we had an earning history, which was a triple digit surprise. That's very, 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 very positive. Upside targets around $85, the stock is only at 73. So you've got about 15% to the upside before we stall out. I actually believe we can go up to about 100 before stalling out. And when you look at analyst rating, you will see that there's eight strong buy recommendations. Now, if we were to look at, the stock is now trading at $73. If we were to buy options on the stock, we would go, 44 days is okay. You can go, 40, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna buy this option that expires in 44 days, don't hold it for more than two weeks. Or go to this option and then it has plenty of time. So the price is $73 right now. What I would do is, what I would do is this. I would wait for a slight pullback to begin filling this gap, okay? Right into this level right here, maybe the 64 level, 60, between 67 and 64. Look to go long when it breaks down into the, the upper or mid 60s, okay? This is a little overdone in my opinion, and I think we're gonna break down and I think we're gonna fill this gap. And after we fill this gap, we're gonna go high. It's too strong to hit the 50 day moving average, but right around the, the mid 60s, right around the 64, 65 level, I think it's a buy. And then assuming we were gonna go to this option here that has 135 days left. And again, this one here, you could do this one. You could do the one that expires in September, but it's only got 44 days. And I have a rule of a rule of law, I say, where anything less than 30 days I don't hold. 
So if you're planning on holding it, it you may you may it's not ready yet, and it's going to pull back, and it's probably going to take a week or two to pull back. So you're probably going to end up buying this one that has 135 days left, which is a great option. And if you look at this, it's at 73. I would probably look to buy it the 65 option when it's closer to 65. It's right now at 11, but it's probably going to be closer to seven or eight dollars because that's we're going to be doing it when price is close to see it's near 75 and the 75 is only five dollars and 80 cents so when it pulls back about eight dollars you're going to end up paying about seven dollars six dollars you're not going to pay 11 bucks look to pay about seven dollars for this option it's between six and 750 okay liquidity is fine you're not going to get ripped off anything here the, the, the bid and offer spread is fine really nothing nothing crazy and let me show you where the danger zone for this stock is. If it breaks the 50-day moving average and starts moving into the twilight zone, I'm not interested in this stock. I'm expecting this stock to continue trending. And with this type of parabolic move, it shouldn't move, pull back too far. So be very, be careful. Put, a, put an alert right around the 67 level. And when it breaks 67, start watching it. And when it hits the 64, that's probably a pretty good buy zone. And I'll be updating you on the stock if it continues staying at my list. The reason I noticed it is I'm, I always look at my relative strength scan and I look at these stocks right here. That's the sweet spot. And I noticed it coming up here. It's, it's, it's new on my radar. It just started moving up. That means it's gaining relative strength. And when stocks are gaining relative strength, and they're making all-time highs, and they're in the right sector. I love the, the uh, medical instrument sector. It's a really hot sector right now. There's a lot of money coming into the medical field right now. Drugs, uh, uh, supplies, there's a lot of money, federal money and private money. And the medical, uh, the medical sector is not as dependent on the U.S. stock market. Uh, it's not as dependent on the overall economy as most other sectors. It's dependent a lot on government funding, grants, private money, but not this consumer discretionary money. And with people going unemployment, rising like crazy, consumer discretionary spending is drying up. That's why I like medical companies because medical companies are not um, dependent. They, they're slightly, de I mean, everything is dependent on consumers, but they're not, that's not their, their, it's not like a retail store where if people don't have money, they're not going to buy Apple product. They're still going to need medical supplies. So that's why I'm looking at medical stocks, COVID-19, medical supplies, medical products, medical accessories. That's where the money is flowing now. And that's a recession proof strategy right now. So H-O-L-X, Hologic is the stock that I'm looking at. Now, folks, do I really need to give you another example of how mainstream media always gets it wrong? I mean, they literally always get it wrong. A while back, the stock, one of my favorite shirt companies and my stocks, Under Armour, it was in major trouble. It was getting slaughtered by the press and had most analysts literally running for the hills. But when, when my mysterious stock market timer picked up on the subtle market signals everyone else was missing, I knew that Under Armour was on the clock. And it was just a matter of days before it was ready to skyrocket. And wouldn't you know it, despite all the negative headlines and the dire warning alerts and signs, Under Armour soared when the timer hit zero. It was a great trade. I wish you, you got in on it. It was a really great trade. Don't bet against my stock market timer. You never, ever want to bet against my stock market timer. It's crazy accurate and it can help you make a lot of money. Click on the link below to see how you could use it to your advantage. Folks, gain an unfair advantage in this type of market cycle. Click on the link below, discover my timers. I've been doing this for many, many years. I've developed skills that can help you make money. Follow the link below, do it now, and have a great day. Bye everyone.